This video series involves a printable thing. You can download it right now. It's in the comments as a PDF. When it's all put together, it's gonna to look a little bit like this. Actually, it's gonna look a lot of it like this. It's gonna have these different components, different ways to understand the rubric. It's got four different extracts. As I work through the videos, I'm going to come up with guiding questions for those extracts. I'm gonna annotate those extracts. I'm gonna tell you the kind of things you're gonna look for in a drama extract versus a uh, nonfiction extract versus fiction versus poetry. The poem that I have in here is like a killer poem. It's really a thing of beauty. Uh, it's by Lee Young Lee. So a printable thing. You have a printable thing. You've printed this out. It looks just like this. It is six pieces of paper. You're gonna need one of these. You fold it in the middle. And this is a high level skill right here. You're gonna staple the spine, line it up, you know. Don't staple your finger. Let me know if you do though. And this is like, yours might even look better than this. You know, show me a picture, let me know. Let me know how it goes for you. How's your stapling go? You're so smart, you're such smart people, but can you staple paper so that you have one of these? You start making videos, these, these are what you want. These are colored pencils. Get some colored pencils. You get rocking on that thing with some colored pencils and like the learning comes alive that way. That's, that's, that's how learning works. Um, color helps. Tactile, this is your hands. What do you do with your hands? That helps. That is uh, what's going on. The power of the pen. Uh, when you do your exam, it's really important to recognize what you're gonna have. You're gonna have a pen. You're gonna have an extract that's gonna look something like this. And you're gonna have uh, a guiding question. We'll talk more about those. Uh, then you're gonna have this. You know, so when you're practicing for the exam, it's important that you practice um, with, with those tools available to you. So I want I want you to have this paper in front of you. I love teaching IB literature. It is without a doubt the best teaching job that I have ever had. And hopefully your teacher, your in-person teacher that you get to see every day, hopefully they bring a sense of joy and wonder to the job because you get to read the best stuff with the best students who are working the hardest to create the most sophisticated works of writing and interpretation that young people do. There, that is like, wow, I am so lucky that I get to participate in that in whatever sense that I get to participate in that. It is really, really, um, it's really marvelous. Knowing that we all work so hard at this, we get to make fun of IB sometimes because what we're asked to do is outrageous, both as teachers and as students. Like nothing will prepare you better for college, but like, wow, is it some work? I always do this with my students. I just call, I call when, whenever we have to send something off for an external assessment or like, you know, we're getting information, I just refer to the IB people as our IB overlords. For this exam, you wanna have a great sense of what the IB overlords are looking for, which means you have to really understand the rubric. So I'm gonna make a video that's all about annotating and understanding this rubric in great detail. Uh, probably about that close when it comes to how uh, detailed we're gonna be. And uh, we're gonna have to understand that rubric so you know exactly what it is that they're looking for. So understand the rubric. Well, the rubric starts with the four different criteria upon which your work will be judged. They're right on the front cover. Your ability to demonstrate knowledge, understanding, and interpretation of texts you've never seen before. It's analysis and evaluation of those texts. What's the difference between those two things? That's the kind of thing we're gonna get into. You, we, you can, we, what? Do you... So these are the four dimensions, A, B, C, and D. But like we need to break those down a little bit into specific skills. And so that's what this page is all about. This page, I'll go over this page in detail. These are like, I, ha I need to be able to do this. And so some of the things that we can do in a video is you can, you know, I'll make the video and then in the comments, you can let me know like, I'm nervous about this one. I'm not sure about this one. Um, and that's gonna steer the work in the next video um, the next series of videos is really gonna dig into these four extracts. The four extracts are any one of the four um, could be, well, two, if you're HL, two of those are gonna be, that's what you write about. So you need to know how do you apply those skills that you've been gathering for two years? How do you apply those skills in the moment um, to each of those extracts? And so that involves reading, annotation, and then the development of a thesis. All of that is gonna be in these future videos that I will make if you like and subscribe. If you like and subscribe, and then that, I know you want me to make them. That's, how, that's the only way I know. That's the only way. Beep. Beep.
be guided by guiding questions. These questions right here, we don't know what they are. We don't know. Um, all we know is that the IB has said, our IB overlords, who we appreciate, um, have said that it's going to focus, each question is going to focus on a formal or technical aspect of literature. And so what are those? Well, here's a very broad, like, set of, like, possible categories that you could look at. Um, they did release two uh, in, like, a, what's called a specimen paper. They released two, um, and I'll talk about those. Um, but basically, it, if you feel confident about these different, these different aspects of literature analysis, um, you'll be in good shape. But you're also going to be in good shape if you understand what you read. You know, so IB is very much, and this is why I love IB, I love them, um, because they stress over and over again that it's not just about like identifying a metaphor or like identifying like the different aspects of figurative language and like, aha, I found it. That's a simile. That's a metaphor. That's imagery. That's symbolism. Oh, the structure is, that's a flashback. They don't care about that as much as they care about meaning. What does it mean? So like, you know, literature has life to it. And so if you can tap into that life, even under exam conditions, you're gonna be in good shape. So when I read these, you know, I picked them. Like they're really, they're so good. Um, so the guiding questions that I come up with are gonna be good. And it's gonna like, it's, the idea is to have a rich experience. And if your essay communicates a rich experience, it's gonna do well and you're gonna be okay. What else is in here? This is in here. This is, I think this is really helpful. I'm gonna explain it. Probably doesn't make any sense to you. Seven concepts in your paper number one. Of course, this, you know, your thesis statement that you develop might have something to do with transformation or perspective or creativity. So I'm gonna talk about all those things. And finally, calm your nerves. Rest easy in this truth. You can't do better than your best. And so this whole system that I'm trying to develop here is the idea that like you can, you know, you can, you can work hard. Like you can, it's not too late. It's not too late. You can be really successful starting right now. If you want to follow me, if you want to do it, it could be great. It could really be great. Um, so just let me know. Let me know if, we, if this is a thing we're going to do. I don't know. It's an experience. I'm trying a new, new way to do things. So it's not too late. And, uh, and you're going to do great. How's that sound? There's a way that you could use this printable magic here. This piece of... this. There's a way that you could use this that you maybe have in your hand right now. If you maybe you have it, um, there's a way that you can use it where you can read the extracts, imagine guiding questions, then I'll give you a guiding question, then you could annotate the extract, and then you could say, like, what essay would I build? You could even build an essay if you wanted to. And then in a later video, I'm going to write an essay. And so you can compare all of those things. So there's still some months between now and the exam. So this series of videos, should I make them, is really designed, like, if you're, ner if you're like, I have not been working, like, my math class has been so hard for the last two years, and I am freaking out about this exam because my English class has been, like, everyone kind of, like, just doing their emotions and doing things. Um, I don't know if I've learned everything I'm supposed to learn. Uh, I I'm trying to put it all in these series of videos. I made another video in another place that is, like, you know, like, it's a 20-minute video that's, like, oh, my gosh, the exam's tomorrow. I don't know how to, I don't know what to do. Um, that one is... It's okay. A lot of people have watched that one. This one is like the process. It's like a process that involves learning what maybe you missed along the way that's going to help you have a positive uh, experience on that exam that's going to help you get the score that you're hoping to get.